Oh, it's here and not at the church. It says it on here. Yeah, we can't put it on Okay, I got nine o'clock. I would like to start the meeting with 15 seconds of silence for Joe Rose. Are they non-clerk? Yes. It's nine. Big Ben says it's nine o'clock. Okay, I would like to comment on Joe. Joe, was, I've known him since I've been here. He always, always had a smile on his face. Uh, such a great guy. He's always very talkable and understanding and he meant what he said. And uh, he did a great job. We're gonna miss him. Anybody else would like to speak to Okay, if not, I'm going to call the meeting to order with the roll call. Um, I'm here. 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 And Bill and Jenny is not here. Okay. Number two item election on a new chairman. With the. Um, Anybody would like to present a new chairman? I would, I would like to appoint Pat for the new chairman. Anybody else? Are we electing a new chair? Yes. Yeah, Dick's supposed to do that. It says Dick. Oh. No, when you have a committee that has a vice chair, the vice chair would run the meeting until the uh, chair has been elected. That's the whole point of having a vice chair. Well, I nominate John as our new chair. You know, I would love to do it, but I'm in a predicament now where most of my summers are going to be tied up. I have grandkids and kids that I haven't seen in so many years, and I'm just going to start taking a little more time to go see him in the summer. But the rest of the year, I would love to do this, but I'm just concerned about myself not being to take care of these meetings while I'm not here or something. So I would love to continue on the vice chairman. And that's what I would like to say. Well, everybody else is a chair. I'm a chair of LCC. He's chair of extension. He's chair. Is he chair? I'm not on this committee. You're not a chair of any other committee, are you? No, I'm not. I was elected to be one. I still I nominated John as our chair. John declined. Hmm? John declined the nomination. Uh, so how many votes do we have here? We have voting for Pat too here. So close nominations. Pardon? You would close nominations then. If there's no further nominations, you'd close the nominations for chair. So I nominate Pat to be a chair. Is yeah. there anybody else available? Well, I'll make my, I'll, I'll close, make a motion to close nominations and have John uh, as our chair. Secretary cast the unanimous ballot for John. John denied. A second on that. John, denied John already the declined the nomination, so I don't know why we're doing this. You don't have to vote. You got two of them? John declined. Oh, John We declined? have somebody yeah. that's been nominated for the chair. And so, I'll accept given that John is the plan. So we need a vote on this then? So you, you close nominations. Okay, I close the nominations with John and Pat. So Pat's the only one running now? Correct. No, nobody else? Rick, you want it? No. Yeah. 
I make a motion we close nominations in Secretary Cassidy and the developer that. I'll second it. There. All in favor, John? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All opposed? Congratulations, Pat. <laughs> so, Pat, you are new chair. Thank you. So, you can take over now. Going to agenda item three, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll take the um, approve the agenda. Motion by Supervisor Weiner to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Supervisor Corkla. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes to approve the agenda. Going to agenda item four, approval of zoning and land committee meeting minutes from January 13, 2021. I make a motion to approve them as long as the secretary doesn't have any changes or. All second. We have a second, a first by uh, Supervisor Mick, a second by Supervisor Corporal. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, ready to vote then. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Going to agenda item five, public comments. We have three minutes per person. Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment on the items on the zoning portion of the agenda? Uh, items um, six through eight. We also have a public comment period for the land description in item nine. Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment? On items 6 through 8 on the agenda. Do we have anyone online on Zoom that would like to make a public comment on items 6 through 8 on the agenda? Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment on items 6 through 8 on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move to agenda item 6. Update on the Alton County Flood Plain Ordinance. And for this one, I'll ask our zoning administrator to give us an update. Whenever the DNR adopts dam failure studies, we get the notifications from the DNR and they grant us six months to update our ordinance. Because of the financial issues that the county has and the tight budgets, we were able to get an extension on, on two of these. So now we have three uh, dam failure analysis studies that we are adopting, and that's what the amendment is to the ordinance. So what, what will happen today is this is um, basically just a presentation for the committee. We'll have to have a public hearing at the next zoning committee meeting. Um, after the public hearing, the committee will then move to adopt, and then we'll have to go to the full county board for adoption. Any questions? Where the heck is this? Um, this is the rather thick part of your packet. Um, the title on it is Update Floodplain Ordinance. Who put that dam in? What's that? Whoever put the dam in. I have no idea. It's an old dam, obviously. They are, yeah. The, the, the DNR has just been catching up on their dam failure studies. Is it cement? Have you been, have you seen it? No, I don't go, I, I literally get the notice from the DNR that has the flood data, the, the valley cross sections. Never heard of it. Adopt from there, so. Mm -hmm. Do so we, have to have, we have to have a hearing on it then? We'll have to have a public hearing, it's a class two notice. So we'll Probably. have that at the next meeting because we're next, attending the order. Before ordinance. the next meeting, yeah, okay, yep. good enough. I want to ask the administrator if, given that the state statutes require that we update our floodplain ordinance and that we include the information that's there, what latitude does the county have to consider any changes in this ordinance given the requirements of the state statutes and that the study was done by a different party? If there's in regards to their studies or in regards to the general zoning, the, the floodplain ordinance itself? Well, when I, when I read through this, um, you've got language highlighted in, in yellow here. Yes. That's proposed on page three. The study was done by an outside firm. 
So in terms of the public speaking or the county board addressing this issue, what latitude do we have to make any changes to anything that we see in the current draft of this document? Um, the, for the stuff we're changing, we have no latitude. This was um, done by engineering firms, submitted to the DNR, and approved by the DNR. Then we get that notice from the DNR, and state statute requires that we adopt this, and it prohibits um, development within the, the, the shadow of the dam downstream. Hence the valley cross section and stuff too, so you can see what the flood elevation would be downstream. So we don't have any latitude away from the statutory requirements to adopt this language. All we would have latitude on would be like development standards, but then if we were modifying our general ordinance, um, any revisions we were would propose to make would have to go to the state, to the DNR. They would have to review it, and then from there it could come back to the committee. Uh, do a public hearing and so forth. So when you prepare this for a public hearing, could you write a few paragraphs to describe what latitude the county has to consider um, how this update would impact what the county can and can't do? Because as I read this, I thought, well, this is just something that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, I didn't see where we had any latitude or how it would impact other things that we may choose to do related to zoning. So that description you just gave was helpful to me at least okay. in terms of understanding if the public and board weighs in, what we do have some latitude to consider changing. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Any other discussion on updating the other We'll go to agenda item seven. This is an update on permits issued for the revenue account information. And this one is also from our zoning department, uh, our zoning minister, want to take this one? Yep, January we brought in $2,850, and then for February we brought in $5,700. And March has been, we're getting busier and busier by the day. We've got a number of permits coming in now, um, fielding a lot of phone calls the last couple of weeks on people that want to do different projects and want to know what the permitting requirements are. And, People turning themselves in for violations, which was kind of a new thing yesterday. Well, greatly appreciate it. So, yeah, yeah. Well, it cost an extra seven hundred and fifteen dollars, as new it was. But it was, you know, it's, it's very nice. We would have got it anyway when we got out to the site. He realized it. You know, he filled all the paperwork out, left, and then called and he said, "You know, I wasn't honest. You know, I did some of the work already. I'm going to come back in and pay the money, and I wouldn't be on the other." Any questions or comments related to the subject? Let me make a motion we approve the liability account. No motion is needed on this one. So any other questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll move on then to item eight, other business and setting a next meeting date. So other business, I want to bring up our House amendment that was tabled. Um, I will put together a little, a short paragraph um, to take it back to the county board the next meeting. We don't zone, the only zoning that we do within the volunteers of the reservation are non tribal members on fee simple land. Um, we don't overlap zoning tribal members on fee simple land have to fall under the guidelines of Ben River zoning. So we don't cross over. So if they're already being zoned by one department, we don't we don't dual zone that. Um, property in question, there were a total of 41 improved properties, I believe. Uh, of the 41 that were approved, I don't even know. There's probably 30 perhaps that have pulp systems, uh, but those are not gonna be included here because we don't zone those properties. We don't enforce against them. This only covers the, the properties that we're responsible for. So I'll write a letter of clarification. Um, so when it goes to the full board again, uh, and hopefully it comes off the table, that'll be cleared up. So are you gonna speak to Supervisor Quebec? She raised some questions. You'll work through those with her. So if this goes straight back to the county board, um, she will have had a conversation with you. Right, the changes that she proposed are illegal to make by state statute. You can't make the changes that she wanted to make. Um, you know, one, there's a couple different options. I've, I've tried calling her a couple times and I haven't been able to, to get a hold of her yet. So, uh, 
Um, but I will speak with her and make sure there's no questions and that she's you know content with the questions into those. Yeah, and I, I would think we would probably just delineate within the packet um, what Josh just said so that it says, you know, not, not even quite a memo understanding, but basically just saying the colony basically has, uh, you know, no intention of enforcing zoning regulations on tribal land uh, that are owned by tribal members. So you use the phrase no intention there. Could you put that? I hope when it goes into the order, it's something um, from a legal standpoint that has more teeth. When you say no intention, that doesn't mean you ne won't necessarily do it, but language that will make clear from a legal standpoint that you have no authority to do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll run it by maps to make sure. I mean, we're, we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So we have to follow state law. And, you know, we can't say we're going to disregard state law. And it's my understanding that state law dictates that we should do zoning on those pieces of property. Bayfield County, Bayfield County took this issue, got taken to court in federal court by Redcliffe for a similar issue and they lost. So there is a discrepancy between federal court interpretation and state law. So I don't think we can say we're going to think in writing, we can say we're not going to follow state law. But in the same aspect, I think, you know, in order to, uh, we don't have money to be sued. We don't want to get involved in a lawsuit. I think we want to say that the full county board by vote says we are not going to uh, enforce, uh, you know, zoning regulations on tribal members on tribal lands. And that's about as far as I'll go. I'll talk to Max about it, but I'm not going to give the finger to the state and say, we're not going to follow state law either. Thank you. Is there anything else related to your business? No, that was all I had. Then that brings us to setting the next meeting date. Uh, let's hold off and in case uh, Jen has anything in particular because the next meeting date for me, I won't have anything pressing other than a public hearing. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it happens in April or May. So, so then in terms of writing future agendas, is there any reason that we couldn't put the next meeting date um, at the end of the land description, just ahead of the yeah, yeah. Yeah. that work for everyone. Sure. So if we could just move it there in the future then. Thank you. Going next to the land description part of the agenda, item nine, we have a public comment period. Is there anyone that would like to comment on items 10 through 13? We're on agenda item nine, the public comment period for agenda items 10 through 13. Is there anyone that would like to speak to any of those items? Mr. Orton? I'm not sure if as a board member, I should speak in the public comments. Is this on? Yeah. I'm not sure if as a board member, I should speak to this in the public comments or when we actually have discussion, if you guys should recognize me. Well, you're not a member of the committee. So at this point, you're a member of the public for purposes of this meeting. All right, well, I'll make my comments now then. Um, it's regarding the, the sale of the Equa Seaway lane to the former owner. Uh, I understand that we own that land now and there's an effort made being made by his realtors to uh, encourage us to sell, <clears throat> excuse me, to sell this piece of land back to him for some amount of back taxes that your committee has determined or that they have suggested. Um, and it's also my understanding that this piece of land has been being worked by your committee for almost 13 years uh, in, in the tax aspect and that he was notified six months ago that his land might be taken. Um, I, I find it inappropriate to even be speaking about this. I'm surprised it's on the agenda. It's our land, it's the county's land now. Therefore, it's a fiduciary, now it's a fiduciary responsibility. Not a, not a, there's no responsibility to the former owner other than what's laid out by ordinance for the former owner. And that one of those options is to buy the land back for the appraised price. As the county, and, 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 and we have to do this for everybody, it's our land now, we have to get the most we can for it for the benefit of the entire county. It's past any phase of trying to work this out 
with the owner. So you guys made that happen. So here we are. We're in possession of a deed that may or may not be worth, you know, whatever amount of money it is. But we need to get the property appraised, especially in these times, and we need to get the most amount of money we can for it for the benefit of the entire town. So I will just say that um, short any, I mean, if the fellow wants his, his land back, he can he can make the uh, approaches outlined in the ordinance. Uh, this does not appear to be an authorized approach under our ordinances in any place. So um, I would I would recommend that we get this property appraised and, and pr proceed with the land sale as we were going to do. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to agenda items 10 through 13? Um, once we leave public comment, then when we get to those items, that's the time for the committee to have this discussion. If anybody wants to say anything regarding those items, now is the time to say what you have to say regarding those items. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to those items? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Foucault? I just got a quick comment on that land sale. I understand we have rules and rules have got to be followed. This is an extraordinary circumstance. When was the last time we dealt with a piece of property worth a half a million dollars? Uh, I don't know what circumstances were with that gentleman. I don't know why he didn't respond to all the notices that were sent. Um, now when push comes to shove and he sees the property has already swept away and now he's making a move. I still think that we should give him an opportunity to make a decent offer on that property. He can't pay $490,000 to us for a piece of property that's worth $490,000. It makes no sense. So I, I think that we should give him a chance to make an offer on this and, he, and if he recoups 25% or 50% of his money, at least he got something back. That, that's a big, you're talking about a fortune there. And I think that we should consider that. Uh, and I'm not making that decision that you guys have to make that decision, but this is just how I feel about it. I, I don't want to see people treated that way, I guess I would say. Uh, I know how I would feel if I lost a half a million dollars because uh, because they was asleep at the switch, and apparently that's what was wrong. I, I just wish we had somebody here who could who could speak to the the uh, inactivity on their part. I don't think anybody here knows why he never responded to all those notices. So I would just I would like to see him given a, a chance to make a reasonable offer on the property. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak or public comment regarding? Agenda items 10 through 13. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during public comment to agenda items 10 through 13? Hearing none, we'll move to agenda item 10 discussion if possible action on a sale of 248 Esquisway Lane to the former owner. And I want to start with some comments on this agenda item. This agenda item is solely related to considering an offer from the previous owner within five years that this committee determines meets the appraised value. This isn't about the history of how the county took the property. I did ask the property lister a couple of questions in preparation for this agenda item. The second page of this item has the letter dated June 10, 2020, and it indicates that the previous owner needed to pay $30,927.55 in the next 90 days. And I asked the property lister why this amount of 30,000 or so was there when the total back taxes is about 69,000. And the answer is this 30,000 is what is needed to pay off the taxes in 2015. It turns out that this individual has been behind on taxes since 2007. So the process that we've been going through with serving notices and indicating the amount that had to be paid by the date, otherwise the county would acquire the property. Um, this has been going on for two and behind on taxes in 2007, which also means he has knowledge since 2007 that even the taxes have to be paid, um, or the county would take it. And so he has that 
on the since 2007, the awareness that if he can't keep up with the taxes, he has an opportunity to sell it um, prior to the county taking action. So the only thing that we can consider here today is an offer um, from the previous owners. I want to ask the administrator if there was no offer in our packet for consideration. Has the county received an offer from the previous owner to repurchase his property? No, we have not. Mr. Bennett, are you with us today via Zoom for this meeting? Mr. Bennett, this is the chair of the zoning committee. Are you with us today for this meeting? Mr. Bennett, this is the chair of the zoning committee. Are you with us today for this meeting? Is there anyone else attending this meeting via Zoom who has the authority to make an offer on this property on behalf of Mr. Bennett? Is there anyone else in attendance who has the authority to make an offer for this property on the behalf of Mr. Bennett? One more time, is there anyone in attendance on this meeting via Zoom or otherwise who has the authority to make an offer for this property on behalf of Mr. Bennett? Hearing none, there is no action this committee can take um, regarding a sale back to the former owner. This committee doesn't have the authority to simply return the property to them. We only have the authority to consider an offer that would meet what we determine to be the appraised value of this property. Mr. Weiner? We had, um, remember last year, we had a sale just like that in Kailua, or by Mont and um, with them 40 acres there. Well, remember that class where we, the, the uh, yeah, so in the, the, we ended up, yeah, the, the we ended up, we're not going to the owner, but we ended up giving it to a new buyer. We sold it to the highest. He, she wanted it back for back taxes of $973. Right. And we sold it to the highest there at $40,000. And right. that's what we did with that case. And I, I feel that this should be run the same way. Hearing no offer, we're going to move to agenda item 11, discussion and action and setting minimum bid prices and start date for the land sale. I ask our property district to please do this discussion. Okay, so um, in your packets, I included a um, the list of all the properties that we're going to have on our land sale uh, with total taxes and expenses on there, as well as um, assessed values, value set last land sale, and then a uh, suggested starting bid price, um, which is open to discussion. Um, uh, so I don't really wanna go through each individual sale number. Um, I, I feel like that would just take too much time. So I would instead ask if there's any, um, adjustments that the committee wants to make to these starting bid prices. This is uh, Supervisor Jennings. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes here, uh, Charlie. Um, on the on the land itself, is there any habitable dwelling um, that that uh, exists on the on the land we're talking about, or is it just strictly land? We're on the agenda item uh, number 11 now on discussion and action on setting minimum bid prices for the start of the date for the land sale. The previous one, there was a burned down structure on it. Okay, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll just ask again, are there any amendments to these starting bid prices that the committee wishes to make? Could you remind us of what, um, on the right side, it says lot not open or lot open. Could you remind us of what that means? Sure. Um, let me just make sure. Uh, of course, I don't have it here. Um, basically, um, lot open would mean there is like improved roadway access. Oh. Lot not open would mean there's no road to access the property. Um, there might still be legal access through, you know, like a platted right of way. It just might not be developed. 
Is there anyone that would like to discuss the suggested minimum price for any of these? Uh, the gas station across the street from this property, the county does not currently own, so the county cannot sell it on a land sale. No. We'd have to follow our due process to take that land, which um, I believe we're still out at least 90 days on that. That's in the process, yes. And just for the uh, edification of the community, this will be the first land sale that we're going to be doing online. So we're going to be doing through uh, wisconsinsurplus.com and uh, other colonies do this. And so this will hopefully broaden our scope of sales. Okay. And I guess question also are on this list here, are you listing the property in this sale? Are you recommending that we, that we list that for point property from I and Ken on this land auction? I think if if the county is not, you know, we haven't received an offer to sell back to the former owner, I think it would be advantageous to list it here instead of just sitting on it. Yeah. So do you have a uh, do you have a recommended price? Um, I did not prepare a price to recommend. Um, I guess, you know, yeah. I guess if we would want to, we could list the starting bid price at either the assessed value or the fair market value, both of which are listed in the write up I had prepared. Um, the assessed value is 493,400 or the fair market value, which is 479,300. Okay, my, my question is, what is the, um, what is the normal uh, uh, price we get for properties? Do we get appraised value, market value for these properties on public auction, or do we get significantly less? Uh, so typically we don't get the assessed value or the fair market value simply because of the fact that most of the properties we take are not in good locations or they have very dilapidated buildings on them. Uh, the reason I would suggest listing this one at its fair market value or assessed value is just because it is not like those properties, it is on the lakefront. I mean, it, I feel we could get a fair value. So, we, so if we listed this on the Scotts surplus and then Cole listed it on Zillow, let's say, we would list the minimum price at whatever, $470,000. The, the appraised value is $479,300 and the assessed is $493,400 according to the tax. Yeah, so my- No, oh, I think those two are reverse. Oh. I believe so. So I shot this 493,000 in the packet. Um, uh, let me just double check on our our website. So the, the only other the only other suggestion I have is, I mean, I'm just thinking about you know buyers that. Um, are going to be looking at this site. It's a lot of money to buy from a county auction, frankly, you know, to have a minimum bid at that. My one of my thoughts, and I don't know if the, if the community is amenable towards this, but as a, the former owner obviously had somebody willing to buy it, and they were ready to close on it. And in my mind, I wonder if you would consider we go back to the former owner and say, 
we will sell it to you for four hundred thousand dollars, and then he can sell it to the new owner, and then he gets to keep a few bucks. He walks away without an empty pocket. But that would be for that for us. That would be a known factor. One of my concerns is if we basically ask you know four hundred seventy nine thousand dollars and we don't get it, and then we just slowly sit on it for a while until we eventually get somebody who's willing to buy it. it might go down, you know. I mean, real estate is hot now. Um, I don't know that much about what land is worth on that. I mean, maybe maybe the four hundred seventy nine is going to be snapped up like that. But I'm also thinking. You know, in my pocket, if I can get four hundred thousand dollars for it and not have to go through the trouble of this, and this guy walks away with, he might walk away with maybe whatever, fifty thousand bucks, seventy thousand dollars, whatever, in his pocket, selling it to the next guy. He'll walk away with something. We'll get money in our hands, but that would be for the committee to think about. And the committee could authorize us to basically work with them to say sell it for 400 back to formal owner, or if that does not work out, list it at the public auction for 479. That would be uh, a possibility <clears throat> if the committee is interested in that. Well, 400,000 would be roughly 80 percent of what it may go for on the open market, and um, given our finances, these are responsibility. That to me doesn't seem attractive. Yeah, I think I think part of it is just you know I don't really know what land sells. I don't know land sells. Eleven acre for you know, close to five hundred thousand dollars seems like a lot to me. But if you think if you think we're going to get that, for all, yeah, for sure. Let's let's try to sell it and maybe we'll get more. I just don't know kind of what the land sells for on the island. I don't have any experience. Well, anything over four hundred thousand to put the county in a better fiscal. Uh, then taking 400,000. So yeah. one of the things I'm thinking about on this agenda item is when you look through this list, many of these properties, we're going to get back less than we are more in taxes. And so I look at this as a, an aggregate. We've got a six-page list after this agenda item of other people who are buying the taxes. And so given there are so many properties that we collect less than we're old, we do need some to help us offset that to balance this because one of the questions that we discussed in the earlier voting meeting is what happens at the end of the year when taxes are due? And you told us the county has to settle with the other taxing entity. And that means every year, if someone doesn't pay their taxes, the county has to give the city of Madison their taxes, we have to give the WIPP taxes, we have to give the school district taxes. And so when we don't collect the taxes we're holding on this, we're literally taking county taxpayer dollars and subsidizing these other taxing entities. And so I have no question that we can get over 400,000 for this. And I look at that amount as helping to offset those for which we are using county tax dollars to pay other taxing entities for all these questions that we sell for less than the taxes. Yeah, are. and that, that, that's an excellent point. I just will remind the committee that with the uh, town of Sanborn versus the, uh, the, the Bad River tribe, we as of this past summer, last summer, we were at settling $550,000 we have paid out. And it goes up $170,000 every year that we pay out in settlements and we don't get in taxes. And that just adds every year, every year, every year until either that case is settled one way or the other. And I'll remind you the case will be settled by either the township winning, in which case we will end up with all those properties on the reservation or the uh, tribe wins, in which case we have to go back to the taxing district and get the money back from them because it never should be taxed in the first place. But either case, it's a significant cash drain on the county general fund to continue to make those settlements at $170,000 a year with no end in sight. So I personally would be comfortable with giving um, the property lister and the administration authority to research this and um, determine the absolute best to list it at what minimum price to start with. I think this will merit some research. Um, and I think given the time of year, this is the time of year when people are starting to get real active in real estate, that we could be directing to sell that in a way most advantageous to the home. I'd be comfortable doing that under the Yeah, I'm
You want to look into that effect? Yeah, let's put that in a formal motion because this will be looked at by people. You want to make a motion? Mr. Cohen? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? The only question that I, the only question that I had, um, I put it in the comments to, um, you know, was the the particular piece of land in question is that zoned only for residential purposes or is it zoned for other things? I'm just wondering. Okay. Yeah. So Josh uh, just stated it would be restricted to residential uses. Awesome. No problem. That's all. That's all I wanted to know. That's good. So that was um, to invite the building to be part of his own authority speaking. Uh, we're ready to vote then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Back to our property listing. Okay. So um, I guess. I would still need some sort of motion if, if there's no more discussion on the land sale prices. I would need a motion to accept these prices and go ahead and list. I um, did have a couple of to ask you about. Okay. Um, number eight, um, the total taxes expenses is $854 and the assessed value is listed at 600. You have a starting bid of 600. Um, does that 600 seem high up we or not to you? Uh, the the starting bid price? Well, what I'm looking at this is we're over $800 in taxes. Right. And if the um, assessed value is 600 and we suggest a starting bid of 600. So this property apparently hasn't been selling, has it? No. And so I'm wondering if we would be better served by lowering this right. one a bit, hoping to sell it so that somebody starts paying the taxes on it. Okay. I mean, does that, that I, seem reasonable? Yeah, I would think so. Yep. And, and if you wanted to give us at least a 50 50 shot at getting it sold this time, what would you suggest for a price? 300. 300. So on that one, 300 um, is the thought. And then if we go to items 21 and 23. Um, a similar conversation there where the um, the taxes are much higher that are owed than the assessed value for the land and then the starting bid is the same as the assessed value. If we want to get those sold and start collecting taxes, what would you suggest in prices for those? Um, maybe just the same as last one, drop them by half. Okay, so on 21, 150. Okay, yep. 23, 100. Yes. So these are properties where we're owed more taxes than the properties were. And if they don't sell, nobody's paying the taxes. But every year we still have to pay the city of Austin and school district taxes on these properties. So at some point we're better off getting them sold so someone's paying taxes. Um, yeah, that's partially correct. So we so we don't actually have to pay the city and all the taxing districts their cut of the taxes on these ones anymore because the county owns it, that makes them tax exempt. Okay, so once we take them. So they're just, it, they're still off the rolls, but yeah. So until we take them off the rolls, we have to pay those taxes? Yes. Okay. So once we take them, we really want them sold then, don't we? Because e nobody's collecting any taxes. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, any other discussion related to this agenda item? No, I'll make a, a motion uh, with the proposed amendments. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Ready to vote then, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, thank you. And then we'll go to agenda item um, 12, discussion of possible action of property subject to tax fees. We'll ask our property lister to walk us through this one also. Okay, um, so similar to the, the land sale list, this was included in your packet. Um, so hopefully you had time to look it over ahead of the meeting uh, so I don't have to go through each and every one of these line by line. Um, uh, some of these ones that are highlighted on here, 
Um, the, the ones highlighted in green are properties that the county could foreclose on. However, they have an improvement on the property and may be occupied. The properties highlighted in yellow are properties that the county could foreclose on but are not um, occupied and may not have improvements. Um, and a couple, just a few minor changes to these also since the packet was sent. Um, uh, on the the final page, I don't have a page, uh, page six. Um, first Mellon Group LLC that's highlighted, second from the bottom. Um, they did pay off their 2017 taxes. Um, so they're all settled up and they'll be coming off of our list. Um, also on page four, highlighted in green, the parcel owned by Amanda Gallegos. Um, she paid off her 2016 and 17 taxes uh, as well. Um, so she's totally caught up in? Not totally, not really. just not subject to tax foreclosure anymore. Um, one of the uh, ones highlighted in yellow on page two, um, a property on Madeline Island, Town of LaPointe, um, Eugene and Jody Stevens. Um, that property um, we could take. Uh, however, I did receive a phone call from Jody Stevens yesterday about the property, um, kind of asking if there's any way we can work with her to try to give her an extension. Um, I just went ahead and I, uh, she had been jobless because of COVID. And she just got a job now again. Uh, so what I did was I told her we'd give her one extra month to pay off her 2016 and 17 delinquent taxes. Um, and if they weren't paid off in full by the next committee meeting date, we would look again at foreclosure just as an update. Um, There is um, a handful of properties here on page six owned by Adele Higgins um, that I would uh, suggest that we go ahead and foreclose on, that we take a tax deed on these properties. Um, we went ahead and served notice and uh, uh, we found out that um, Ms. Higgins uh, is passed. Um, so we went ahead and published and did the due process that we have to do when they're when they've passed away. Um, we actually had, I believe we had some of her family members contact us and they said that they weren't interested in recovering the property um, and they were just waiting for it to go into foreclosure, I believe. Um, so out of uh, all of this list, I would suggest that, that uh, these properties owned by Adele Higgins would uh, we take a tax deed on. And are those the only properties you recommended at this time? Yes. Okay. Anyone want to make a motion to take the properties that were recommended by the property listing? Also, is there a second? Also, yeah, I'm just searching. We have a motion by Supervisor Parker and a second by Supervisor Weiner. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or comments about the tax deed notice list? Something that I would find helpful and fairly new on this committee, some of you have been here a while, is I'd, I'd be interested in the column on there that tells me the last date that they were current on taxes. Because when we're fairly new and look at this list, we don't know if this is the first time that they were behind on taxes or if this is an ongoing situation with properties. And uh, I know people who uh, for decades have been behind. I've just never been having to review these to make decisions. So that information could be helpful because it gives us some sense of how long have they known that you know they're having a time challenge to pay their taxes. So I would find that um, helpful. Okay. I will uh, I'll try to squeeze that in the list. And then one more question. Mm -hmm. Some of these properties are worth a fair bit. Um, does the county recommend to anyone or could you 
Um, people could get a um, home equity loan. So let's say they're getting a bit behind on taxes. Is there any way the county could maybe put something together that says, you know, in case they're behind on taxes, one option may be consider um, an equity loan on that property to pay the taxes just so they know that might be an avenue for them to consider. Sure. So um, we don't do exactly that. We do something kind of similar. Um, uh, before we actually send out the notice for the application for tax deed, um, in February, we send out just kind of a blanket letter to everyone who's delinquent at that time on their, you know, three years prior taxes, you know, giving them the warning, the heads up, you're delinquent on these taxes. If you don't pay by this time, expect to receive a notice from us. And in that letter, we do um, include a few resources, places of contact where they could possibly get help mm -hmm. paying for their delinquent taxes. I think rural housing is one of them. Um, I, I'm not sure all the different ones off the top of my head. But even contacting a lending agency okay. for um, a home equity loan or a, a equity loan on the property, then the lender would uh, secure that loan by putting a lien on the property. Mm -hmm. So just so that someone may not be aware that that's something they could consider. If it sure. For that point. Sure, that's certainly something we could add to that letter. Any other discussion on this item? So that's all you need from us on this one then? Uh, yes. Okay. So we'll move next to item 13, other business. Are we going to have a um, land sale uh, on, on, on a live on auction date maybe set or something? Oh, yeah, so so we just set all the bids for the land sale. So we're going to be having a land sale. Um, the um, In doing you know my research beforehand on how Wisconsin surplus works, we take we um, create little, you know, like data sheets for all the listings, and we send them to Wisconsin Surplus, and they get them listed within 24 to 48 hours, I believe. So what my plan is to have everything prepared. Or we have most everything prepared. We'll just have to adjust the the prices um, as they were adjusted today. Um, we're going to send them and ask them to have everything listed on the site on this coming Monday. And then my plan is to have um, have the sale go for 30 days. And then um, we will have our committee meeting right around, you know, right after that 30 days is up. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that is a question that I have is, um, is the committee interested in approving the, the bids before they go through? Or do we just want to go ahead and take highest bidder that comes through as winner on Wisconsin surplus. Last time we approved the bid, and so we may have parcels, let's say it's a dollar, we certainly would want to be able to say no to that. Um, the, or, so, so that's one of the, yeah, so that's one of the stipulations in our listing on Wisconsin surplus is we can say, if nobody meets our minimum bid, we just don't sell it. They don't get the property. So we have to meet that minimum number, otherwise it won't sell. So what does it mean for the county, uh, what does the county pay to have it on Wisconsin surplus? Nothing. 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 Okay. Um, the fee goes on to the buyer. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, the question I would have, um, you know, for most of those properties, if you listed, these are things that people are going to take out a checkbook and write a check for. What about the little point property? I mean, every time that that, um, I'm thinking about lining up credit, lining up a loan. I mean, do we need to build more time into that? Because, you know, if I were to go to the bank and say, I want a uh, half million dollar loan, maybe, if I win this auction, you know, I'll, I mean, I think this might be a little like a one-off procedure. It might have to have for this piece of property because people aren't going to, you know, they're not going to write a check for this. Or at least I don't think most people are going to write a check for it. Um, so the question is, if you were to have, you list it on Monday, you have 30 days, and then how, you know, how do they, what's the earnest money? What do they have to put down? Like in all the other real estate transactions I've been involved with, put an offer in, you put something down while you're doing the financing. Right. 
Um, I don't have that in front of me. I know Wisconsin surplus does have rules for that. They require a certain amount down, I believe, and then within a certain number of days, the remainder of the payment, and they won't ever, I mean, you know, we're not going to give it to the person until we get all that money from Wisconsin but they, surplus. But they, 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 what happens is the buyer pays Wisconsin surplus, right? Yes. And then Wisconsin surplus forwards the money to us. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm just, like I say, most of these land sales, I'm not concerned at all. Yeah. I just don't know how this $500,000 land sale, can, can you extend, can we do that as a one-off sale and extend it more than 30 days? I would think so. I'm not 100% certain I can check into that. Um, yeah, I mean, I because because I would like to be able to take a little bit more time on this piece of property, list it on Zillow, make sure that people have the opportunity to line up financing for it. Because I'm not, you know, it's like if I'm going to bid on this property, I haven't bid. Right. Well, you got to meet the minimum bid, right? Right. And the minimum bid is will be determined by staff. Right. But I'm assuming the minimum bid will be somewhere around the four hundred seventy thousand dollars. It's going to take me a while to figure out how to get that money together. Yeah. Most likely more than 30 days. Right. Um, I, I did have an idea. If we, I almost wonder if it would be easier to hold our land sale with all the properties listed yep. as it is, and then maybe have this one separate, yep. totally separate with a different finish date, you know, so that also gives us more time to yeah. work on yeah. pricing. Yeah. And, and, and that, that would be my reaction. You know, I think the committee would be amenable for it that I I would like to be able to have this be have a separate start date, a separate option, and a separate length of uh, extension so that people can line up a half million dollars worth of money. Okay. So I don't know if anyone has looked at um, Hansen auctions online. There's a number of websites where they have land lots of farms and woodland and stuff. And I kind of follow those and, and one of the things, um, I haven't followed it in great detail, but, but I think what they do is they basically advertise this well in advance of the actual sale. And that way, when I first take a peek at something, if I think, gee, I might be interested in that, that gives me ample time to consider financing or where I would get the funds from, et cetera. Um, so the people know it's gonna be available and basically time to line up that money um, prior to the actual sale where people are getting. On, on Hanson, you pay your commission up property, but that fee, I sold that on Hanson's one. But they advertise the properties are going to be for sale well right. in advance of the actual auction. Right, so you have to pay, we're telling you to pay them, like on this property, you probably want to pay them $25,000 up front before you can start advertising. So with those kinds of companies, you have an upfront fee, you have to pay in order to get that service. But right. like Clark mentioned in Zillow, um, anybody that's searching, you know, Zillow kind of has been going to first instead of like realtor.com over the years and different real estate agencies, you know, they use global bankers or whatever. Zillow kind of has been going to anybody looking for property on that, you know, on Clark, they look down there and it's going to direct them to, you know, the Wisconsin surplus auction, you know, so that way hopefully, you know, reading the letter, they had three people that were actually bidding on this property. So hopefully one of those three people will see it. I mean, in the perfect world, it's all. Merca, the selling agent, and say, hey, for 2%, you know, put that on yeah. you know, because they really got, they don't need to do more than one the money, you know, we're tied and don't know what to do. Right. So, so the point is, this advertising is done well ahead of the auction, and then you take the terms that they're going to have to meet, but the winning bidder has so many days to provide their funds. And so, to the serious buyer, they go, in some cases, months in advance when the property is going to be put up for sale. And they understand what the terms are. So if they're a serious buyer on a property, you do that financing and getting your money ready before the auction, instead of, in this case, the county waiting until after the auction to see if someone can get in finance. So they're all having to make sure they're pre-qualified, they have the good funds ready. I think it's 10 days for the county. They want those funds. Um, yeah, and, and I guess I would like to see, you know, I mean, the, the people who put an offer on this piece of property, either had cash or they had finance, you know, and I think it'd be worthwhile to make sure that we coordinate that to say, if they're, if they're going to spend that amount of money anyway, let's try to coordinate that and then hopefully this will be a seamless issue for us. But I would like to talk to them 
to say our intent is to list it at whatever, 476. And if we do it on this date, will you be able to get this in? Now, now the real estate agent, probably, she's not going to be involved in it because there isn't any, there's no taste of original, no, there's no commission in this. It's, you know, a real estate agent is no longer being paid, I would imagine, from the seller unless they pay them privately to help them all as consultants. But yeah. that would be a buyer's fee. Yeah, 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 it's not us, you know, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we. Yeah, I, I think we'll. Uh, we may take a couple, three weeks here, just to get all this information set up before we put it out there. And make sure that we know what we're going to get into. Okay. Anything else? So we're all on the same pages here. The, yeah. We so have, we have a lot of. Questions and answers that haven't been solved yet. So, just give me if she could write up regulations and just talk about what you would receive this motion process. Well, what, what the committee voted on and approved was basically all the land sale, including the gas station. So, that will be advertised starting next week. So, all those properties will be sold. Uh, this one property, we're going to wait a couple of weeks before we sell it to make sure that because it is worth so much to make sure that we have it lined up properly. And that process, given how the county is going to do sales going forward, will probably be a good process to have in hand for other properties too, because even a $10,000 property, there may be people who say, look, I need to finance this. Um, so this will probably serve the county well to Work out those details. Yeah, yeah. This, we're gonna, we're gonna. This is our first time on the Wisconsin surplus, so we will document this for future staff and for future committees to say, here's the steps one through ten that we take to sell this piece of property. And we have used Wisconsin surplus. Uh, the highway department uses Wisconsin surplus to sell stuff. We've utilized Wisconsin surplus here at the courthouse to sell uh, equipment, filing cabinets, tables, chairs, and stuff. So. We've worked with them before and they're aware of us. This is, we're just adding this into the land sale. Mr. Pupal? I just got a couple of comments here. I know the horse is out of the barn, but I'm going to shut the damn door anyway. Uh, I just wondered if, if you guys could tell me if this is any notice of the city of this money or his notice and why is it is in case of here this is my body is that kind of money sitting out there we're gonna see come here and I'll get um the answer is gonna hear the packet of proof information from the vehicle and the sound light and this is on and yes it was all aware of the meeting and this has to come to the city in there for a time. You will know if this gentleman has the legal counsel. It's not our place to be involved with this decision. All right, the last question I have is what will the gentleman be and who is that? We're going to set that up in response to the other besides the community market value. In the packet, and our property is the next thing to reverse, but in the packet, it said assessed value of 493,400 and the trade value of 
Yes, sir. I can barely hear you guys. I think the mic, something's going on with the mic system. Thank you. So we'll go with the April 27th. And then motion to approve. Motion by one Supervisor Nicholson. Second by Supervisor Corporal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 